Hey there, this is Jim from Robot Junkyard and SoundsofSolerno.com, and today I'm sharing with you a great tip on how to get some extra stereo width out of your tracks. Since the dawn of stereo, mix engineers, recording engineers, mastering engineers, and pretty much anyone who has ever spent any time trying to record audio has been trying to make those recordings sound as wide as possible. Widening techniques have included the use of panning, spreaders, delays, EQ, reverb, mid-side processing, and much, much more. In today's tip, I'm going to show you how to use an old-school, super simple, and incredibly resource-light method of stereo widening using an often underutilized plugin that's found right in Logic out of the box. I learned this technique from the fantastic Mike Verda during a lesson he was teaching on improving virtual instrument templates for orchestral mockups. But this technique can be applied to pretty much anything and everything. And now I present to you stereo widening using the built in Logic Gain plugin. Today I'm going to be applying this technique to a drum bus. And the reason I'm choosing to do this is that it's also going to allow me to demonstrate a significant pitfall of this technique and a workaround that I've come up with. And just a quick note that the workaround I'm going to talk about a little bit later on requires the use of the channel EQ found in Logic Pro 10. If you're using an older version of Logic, the channel EQ found in those older versions does not allow for mid-side processing, so you'll need to use a different method to accomplish the same workaround. Here's a simple drum loop that I created in Ultrabeat many years ago for a song from my first album. I've already done my usual drum kit enhancements of EQ, compression, reverb, a little bit of distortion, and for being eight years old, it's sounding pretty good with hits coming from around the stereo field, but it still doesn't have that super wide sheen that I look for today in my music. And this is where the gain plugin is going to work its magic. First, I'm going to add an auxiliary send from my drum bus to a new bus that I've already created and called Kit Widener. This bus will feed into my main loudness bus, which allows this widening effect to be used in parallel with the original signal, and I can dial in exactly how much of this widening effect I need. I'm going to turn the send volume up to zero, but on the new bus, I'm going to pull the fader all the way down for now. On the new bus, let's go ahead and insert the Logic Gain plugin. And once open, you're going to swap the left and right channels and then invert both. But since we're talking about phase inversion of an audio signal, before we continue, I thought I'd pass along this quick public service announcement. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. What? Don't cross the streams. Why? It would be bad. I'm fuzzy on the whole good bad thing. What do you mean bad? Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total protonic reversal. All right, that's bad. Okay. All right, important safety tip. Thanks, Egon. All right, Ray, take the left. Egon, take the right. Now, since we're just working with audio today, and chances are you're not currently battling the evil forces of Gozer, we should be okay. So cross the streams and invert away. Let's start the loop up again. As I bring the volume up on the widening bus, you'll start to hear more activity to the far left and far right of the stereo field which is exactly what we want, that extra energy from the edges. But you might also start hearing what sounds like the center starting to hollow out. This is because of the phase inversion that Egon warned us about, and as I continue to raise the widener volume, the sound really starts to degrade. This is definitely not what we want, so let's dig a little deeper into why this is happening. To give you a better visual into what's actually happening, let's open up Logic's goniometer, which is found in Logic's multimeter. If you don't already use this built-in meter, I highly recommend it because it's going to show you where in your stereo field an audio signal is coming from. I use this with every song I work on as it provides another visual aid in helping to make sure that I'm not making silly mistakes with my stereo field. So as you can see, I have a signal coming from primarily the center, the kick and the snare, but then bits like the hats and the congas are panned around the stereo field. To really demonstrate what's happening, I'm going to solo just the percussion, and I'm no longer going to swap the left and right channels. Now 
You can see the left and right is very defined with just these instruments. But as I bring the volume up on the widening bus, notice that the overall volume is getting weaker, all the way to effectively zero when I reach unity on the fader. This is because I've reversed the phase of both the left and right signals, so when Logic recombines the widener bus with the drum bus, it cancels out the signal. Let's pull the fader back down. Let's undo the left and right phase inversion, and we're only going to swap the left and right channels this time. Now, as I raise the widener signal towards unity, we will slowly hear the combined buses become effectively mono in nature, because we now have identical signals coming from the right and left. When we swap the channels and combine that with the phase inversion, the goniometer now displays something like this, where we have only hard left and hard right signals with nothing coming from the center. Now this is great, this is exactly what we want. Additional signal information coming in from the far left and far right to make the audio sound wider. Almost like it's coming from beyond the stereo field itself. Now that we know what's happening, I'll bring the volume up on the widener bus and we can start to hear that extra audio information on the fringes. Like many effects, moderation is key. For this particular track, I find minus 15 dB on the fader to be a nice sweet spot. Let me mute the widener bus a couple of times so you can hear the difference. Now what about that hollowing out effect that we heard earlier with the full drum kit? I've muted everything but the kick and snare so I can illustrate the issue with this technique. The channel swap is basically finding all of the center information that the phase inversion then cancels out. If you have an instrument where most of the signal is from the center, like kicks typically are, then you slowly cancel out that center signal as you raise the widener volume. And you're left with only the hard left or hard right information, which may not exist for certain instruments. And this is where my workaround comes in handy for when you are working with something like this drum bus. So what I've done is insert an instance of the Logic Channel EQ before the gain plug-in on the widener bus. And then I set the EQ to process only the mid-signal. Now I can just reduce the amount of center signal that even reaches the gain plug-in. If there's little to no center signal hitting the phase inversion, then there's little to nothing to cancel out with the phase inversion. In this case, most of the center signal is from the kick and the snare, so I've decided to low cut where the meat of the kick lives, cut some of the snare frequencies, and put in an overall gain reduction to catch the higher frequencies. As I toggle on and off the EQ, you can hear a definite difference in the volume and weight of the kick and snare. Now that we have the center signal back, let's put everything together. I'll mute and unmute the widener bus entirely so you can hear the full difference. Again, it's very subtle, but it adds yet another layer of width and brings just a bit of extra energy to the edges of the stereo field. Other DAWs can accomplish the same widening technique, but not always in the same manner. Depending on your DAW, you may need to use a combination of plugins and or channel strip settings. If you're not sure how you might do this, go ahead, read the manual, or hit up the interwebs, find some other great tutorials, something out there will help you. And there you have it. Using this simple but underappreciated gain plugin found directly in Logic, you can add some extra dimension to your tracks that you might not get from more traditional methods. Let me know what you think of this technique in the comments below, and if you liked what you learned, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. It'd be much appreciated. Thanks for watching, and here's to making more great music.